you've seen any of my videos before, you may have noticed that they tend to be animated with a few rather specific shades of grey. Well not this time, because this video is all about colour, and is presented in glorious Technicolor. Actually we're not changing the animations, have to follow the branding right? This orange is, well, orange, but is the colour named after the fruit, or the fruit named after the colour? In Old English, the term for apple was used for all fruits, including oranges. Not for berries, there was a separate word for berries. Pine cones, though, were obviously apples. Still today, in some languages, this can be seen. The Dutch, seen as apple for oranges, and art apple for potato, reflect this history. The Dutch, by the way, love the colour orange, because their royal house is the House of Orange, named so after William the Silent inherited the Principality of Orange in the south of modern day France. This principality's name predates both the fruit and the colour, so there you go, the French town came first. However, the town's name has nothing to do with the fruit or the colour. It wasn't until the 13th century when the word orange was introduced to English from the old French word orange, in reference to the fruit. It then wasn't until 200 years later, the 16th century, that orange was used in reference to the colour, before which the colour had been referred to as yellow red or yellow saffron. So there you have it, the colour is named after the fruit. Oranges look orange because of the presence of coloured pigments, carotenoids, that reflect orange light, roughly light with wavelengths between 590 and 620 nanometers. These carotenoids absorb light of other wavelengths, so we only see the reflected light and thus see the colour. In the same way, chlorophyll makes leaves green because it reflects green light, and anthocyanins make periwinkles purple because they reflect, um, where's the purple wavelength? There is no wavelength that gives purple light. The colour purple is made up. This is a graph of all possible colours as seen by non colourblind humans. A chromaticity diagram. Here, the colours associated with the wavelengths of visible light appear around the outside edge. The rest of the colours can only be made by mixing different wavelengths of light. Purple, magenta, and of course white can only be made by mixing multiple wavelengths of light. Purple is the result of mixing light from each end of the spectrum, red and blue. Or to put it another way, purple is the absence of green. Your brain then simply invents a colour to go with that scenario. And purple is born, in your head, after your eyes see no green. Your eyes however don't actually measure the light's wavelength like a spectrophotometer. Instead, your eyes rely on specialised photosensitive cells. There are two types of these cells. Rod cells are highly sensitive but unable to distinguish between wavelengths, thus giving us night vision but no colour. The cone cells, on the other hand, are able to distinguish between different wavelengths of light. There are three types of cone cells, each sensitive to a different range of wavelengths, roughly corresponding to red, green and blue. Red light mostly stimulates the red cone cells, and our brains interpret this as the colour red. Likewise, blue light mostly stimulates the blue cone cells, and our brain interprets this as the colour blue. Yellow light, however, stimulates both the red and green cone cells, and our brain interprets this as the colour yellow. And, when both blue and red cone cells are stimulated by a mix of wavelengths, our brain interprets this as the colour purple. This biology allows us to trick your brain into seeing colours that are not really there. You're so easily tricked. This orange slice on your screen looks orange, but unlike a real orange sitting on your desk that is reflecting orange light onto your eyes, the orange produced by whatever screen you're watching this on is not a single photon of orange light. The screen only produces light of three wavelengths, one for each of the types of cone cells in your eyes. By carefully mixing these three wavelengths, we can excite each of your cone cells and trick your brain into seeing any colour, including orange. So what about the spelling of colour? There were historically several contenders for the appropriate spelling of colour. Until the obviously best, as all but one English speaking country uses it, spelling with a U was settled upon in the 17th century. However Noah Webster, he of dictionary fame, was not convinced Americans were capable of utilising the U correctly, so he removed it in the middle of the 19th century as part of his conscious simplification of English spelling. So what's your favourite colour? Tell me in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.